Assalamu alaikum everybody this is Dr. Saad Ahmed and I'm going to teach you the basic electronics course which is an interesting course which with me will be the uh, will be engineer as for Ghani and he is going to assist me in this course and will be providing very useful help for all of us so let's start I'm going to tell you the name of the book which I'm going to use this is the book the electronic principles by Albert Martino and the edition will be 8th edition so I want you to get this book paper back book will be good but if you get a peer PDF even then it will work other than this book we are going to use some reference books which is electronics devices which is a very popular book Floyd and electronic devices and circuits and electronic devices and circuits by Bogart so these are the reference material which we will be using. okay so we have some basic information about electronic components and these components are basically uh, used in electronic circuits they are of two types the passive components and the active components the difference the difference is that active components changes their value with increasing voltage or current the sim in simple words you can say that they change their characteristics according to the predefined conditions while if you talk about passive components passive components are linear components and they are basically follow a straight paths they do not change for any particular condition examples are for passive components resistors and for active components diodes diodes are the devices which can be called an active component because they change their characteristics while resistors capacitors these are the devices which are passive components an electronic component is any basic discrete device or physical entity in an electronic circuit used to affect electrons and the associated field okay so we have some passive components here you can see the resistors I hope you also remember how to decode these color codes then you know the capacitors how to what is the coding system then we have transformers and lots of other things okay so next is what is a charge a charge can be positive or can be negative normally as you must have studied before there are two theories of electron flow and they are electron theory and the conventional theory and conventional theory we know that current flows from positive to negative and in electron theory we know it flows from negative to positive it is the way of understanding things either way it's the same thing but normally we will be using electron theory to understand the working of different semiconductor devices
okay few basics there are there is a force between charges you know it very well like charges repel unlike charges attract unit of charge is coulomb these are all you know the mass unit charge of an electron is 1.602 into 10 raised to power 19 minus 19 coulombs okay let's move forward electric current the basic definition of current is the flow of charge the charges flow in a particular direction from a material which is normally a conductor and to calculate the current we have this formula I is equals to Q upon T current I is the amount of charge that flows past a point in a unit of time one ampere is a number of electrons having a total charge of one coulomb moving through a cross section of in one second this is the time this is the charge so if we put in the value we will find out the current what is the current if two coulombs passes a point in five seconds so two coulombs five seconds 2.5 is 0.4 amperes of current simple next voltage is the work done per unit it is responsible for establishing current without voltage there cannot be any current this is the main thing V is for voltage, W is for work done, and Q is for charge. Work is done as a char as charge is moved in a electric field from one potential to another potential. You can say that uh, the potential difference between two points in a circuit is called voltage. What is the applied voltage if two joules of work done? Work is done on 0.5 coulombs of charge to drive it between two points these are the two points and we want to move the current so this is the formula and you can apply and get this answer of voltage and W will be the work done that is 2 and 0.5 will be the charge so this gives you 4 volts I hope your following points then we have the definition of voltage one volt is the potential difference between two points when one volt joule of volt is used to move one coulomb of charge from one point to another point voltage is responsible for establishing current try to remember this formula we'll continue now next the basic units which are going to be discussed during the course length quantity is length unit will be meter and m will be the symbol mass kilogram kg time in seconds electric current in amperes temperature in kelvin luminous intensity is candela that is the Roshni and now we have amount of substance is mole and mol is the symbol so these are some basic units there are plenty of more but these are some journals units which I wanted you to have a look at then we have important electrical units which we are going to discuss over and over again so current ampere charge coulomb voltage volts resistance ohms and power is what and there are many formulas related to these five 
quantities and their units and you must and you must have heard about all the formulas related to the power the ohms law and everything and I you need to remember all these to proceed further okay next some scientific notations these are very simple very large and very small numbers are represented with scientific and engineering notations the engineering notation is used or the scientific notation is used just to make sure that you have a value which is really understandable and you don't have to write so many digits like if you want to write this 47 mega k is 10 raised to power 3 mega is 10 raised to power 6 micro 10 raised to power minus 6 milli small m 10 raised to power minus 3 so this is how and we have studied this before in the previous course so I'm not going to waste time on that but if you have any questions you can ask me later on so okay large numbers are represented as I showed you in the previous that clo is 10 raised to power 3 then we have mega 10 raised to power 6 then we have giga 10 raised to power 9 tera 10 raised to power 12 and 10 raised to power 15 is better and for small numbers milli is 10 raised to power minus 3 micro is 10 raised to power minus 6 as earlier said in the previous slide then nano is 10 raised to power 9 pico is 10 raised to power 12 and femto is 10 raised to power 15 most of the things here are very easy to remember so don't worry about it just concentrate and focus on your studies and you will be able to initially maybe it is looking a little difficult to you but later on you're going to find it very simple anyway so if I have a value that is 0.47 mega ohms it can be converted into kilo ohms very easily because the unit is smaller you have a large number if unit is large then we have a small number like 0.47 so if you are going from 1 mega to 1 kilo you will be multiplying it by 1000 and if you are going from 1 kilo to mega then you will be dividing it by 1000 this is what you need to remember multiplying from high unit to lower unit and divide from lower units to high units next is again an example of picofarad converted into microfarad you can see a larger unit here and a smaller number same as the smaller unit and a larger number so it all adds up like this if you want to add 10,000 ohms plus 22 kilo ohms then you can simply convert those 22 kilo ohms into ohms by multiplying it by 1000 and you will get 22,000 ohms and just add to get 32,000 ohms and if you want to convert it you can just divide by 1000 and you will get this 32 kilo ohms okay next
will be t so here we can see atomic molecular atom theory of matter the atom the molecular theory of matter the atom the molecular theory of matter is composed of small fast moving particles called atoms these are very small fast moving particles these atoms can join together to form a molecule the atoms come from a Greek word atomos which means invisible and as you know you cannot see the thing which we are interested in is nucleus here the center of the atom is positively charged and we consider these electrons which are shown here in red as negatively charged particles some semiconductor principles the best conductor silver copper and gold one have one valence electron whereas the best insulators have eight valence electrons this is important one and eight and what are valence electrons valence electrons are the number of electrons pre present in the valence orbit of an atom and valence orbit is the last orbit of that particular atom so you have to like it can be a fourth orbit if you take copper for example copper has 29 atomic number and uh, the atomic structure if you draw the atomic structure then first orbit will have two then second orbit will have eight electrons then 18 electrons and the final orbit will have one electron so 2 plus 8 10 10 and 18 makes 28 and 129 so the valence or orbit is carrying one electron single electron and according to definition it will be considered as a good conductor or the best conductor S okay and you can find out the atomic number of and like if you check the silver whose atomic number is 47 and if you check the electronic configuration you will find one electron in its fifth orbit which again makes it a be better conductor and uh, if you go for gold then gold has 79 electrons and 79 electrons with the sixth orbit the valence orbit having single electrons so silver has 47 and and I have told you copper has 29 so if try and make the atomic structure to find out that you have one electron in the valence orbit which is a electrical property which makes it what a good conductor and similarly if you have a insulator uh, we'll be discussing it about it later but if you draw the, the structure of an and so later you will find eight valence electrons and when chemically speaking if you have eight electrons in a valence orbit then it's a stable that becomes chemically stable and uh, that's one of the reason it cannot allow current to flow semiconductor is an element with electrical properties between those of a conductor and of an insulator so we have one electron in the valence orbit of conductor eight electrons in the valence orbit of insulator so semiconductor have four valence electrons like carbon germanium silicon these are the elements which have four valence electrons and they belong to this atom, the periodic table fourth group of the periodic table we'll discuss about doping a later on okay the doping in doping if you look at the doping 
doping means adding some kind of impurity into a pure material and to use semiconductors for electronic purposes you need to de dope it with an element which either belongs to the third group a trivalent element or a fifth group element that is a pentavalent so there will be two possibilities of adding impurity atoms to the fourth group element that is and normally we have germanium and silicon used as a main material for making electronic components devices ICs and overall so we'll be discussing it further with details for this unit that is it for it and we will discuss about these principles of semiconductors and how they work in the next